discipline in mathematics is probably one of the hardest things for people to develop. You know, it's about building strong habits, really. You know, every day when you wake up, you probably have something to do. Maybe you have a class, you know, maybe you have a job, maybe you have, you know, things you have to do, personal things, maybe you have kids, who knows, right? Everyone has responsibilities, right? Everyone has things they have to do. And so what you have to do is you have to develop habits, things that you do every day or at least certain days of the week that are related to, to your math success. So as a concrete example, maybe you say, hey, okay, every day I'm going to study for one hour a day. Just one hour, right? No more, no less, just one hour. And the reason that a habit like this tends to be so successful with people is that it's not too much and it's not too little. You know, a lot of times when people are getting ready to study, they have to get into the zone. And that could take five minutes, it could take 10 minutes. If you're having an off day, it could take 20 or 30 minutes. So by giving yourself an hour, I feel that creates a more reliable game plan. So if you're having a hard time, you know, getting going, if you're having a hard time studying, if you're having a hard time in your classes, just do this, right? Create that simple habit, that one habit, one hour a day, every day, and you'll just get so much better. Hi, in this problem, we have a function f of little r, and it's given by a piecewise function. And this is basically something that tells you the gravitational force uh, exerted uh, by the Earth on a unit mass at a distance little r from the center of the planet. Okay, so uh, here big M is going to be the mass of the Earth, uh, G is the gravitational constant, and R is uh, the radius of the Earth. I'm going to go ahead and write that one down because we're going to need to think about that one a little bit. Radius of the Earth. In particular, it's positive. Okay, that's kind of important. And the question is, is this function uh, continuous? So this is a function of little r. So let's first look at each piece. So this top piece here, again, is a function of little r. So it doesn't matter what little r is, this top piece is going to be continuous because there's no funny stuff going on, right? G, M, and big R here are all constants. Uh, little r is the only variable here, and there's no problems here, right? There's not an issue. There's no division by zero. There's no square roots. There's no logarithms. Uh, this is a nice, clean, continuous function. Here on the bottom, little r appears uh, down here, which could be bad because you might say, oh, it might be zero. But little r is greater than or equal to big R. But big R is the radius of the Earth, so that means that little r is positive down here. Okay, so this is positive, so little r is positive, so we're never going to divide by zero. So just from inspection, um, this piece here and this piece here are continuous. Uh, again, little r is the variable in both cases here, and in this case it's not uh, zero. In fact, it's positive, so there's no issues at all. So the only place where there is uh, questionability, you know, is, is it's questionable that uh, it might not be continuous would be at big R. So we simply just have to verify um, that it's continuous at big R. So let's check. So what does it mean to be continuous at big R? So using the definition of continuity, it would mean that the limit as little r approaches big R of f of little r is equal to f of big R. You might say, whoa, how'd you know that? It's because as I wrote that down, which I did kind of quickly, I thought of this formula. This is the limit as x approaches c of f of x. And this is equal to f of c. So this is what it means for a function to be continuous at c. This is the definition. And what books often do, which I think is really good, is they break it up into three pieces. So like it has to be defined, the limit has to exist, and the third condition is typically this one. However, this condition here encompasses uh, the previous two. So this is oftentimes just the definition. So here it's the same thing. Our C is big R, right? Instead of little r, we have x. Okay. So let's go ahead and work through it. Now, to find this, we have to think about one-sided limits. So first, um, let's just go through and just make sure that this makes sense. Let's just go through all, all three conditions that I mentioned just to verify the process. So the first condition is that it's defined at big R. So is it? Let's see. If I take big F of big R, 
Well, I would look at this piece here. In this case, little r is equal to big R. So basically, we're plugging big R in here for little r. So it'd be gm over big R squared. And that certainly makes sense. Big R can't be zero. It's the radius of the Earth. <laughs> that's, that's why I wrote it down up here. I haven't done this problem, but I thought, okay, that's going to be a consideration. So worth, worth noting. Um, the second thing we need to do is make sure the limit exists. So because um, we have a piecewise function with inequalities like this, we're going to look at one-sided limits. So let's look at the limit as little r approaches big R from the left. So because we're approaching from the left, um, that means that little r is smaller than big R. So we're going to use the top piece here. So this is the limit as little r approaches big R from the left of gm little r over big R cubed, just like that. Okay, because we're approaching uh, from, from the left. So um, if you plug in uh, big R here, there's no issues. You just get GM big R over big R cubed. And we end up with GM over big R squared, which was big F of R. So it's looking really good, right? Let's check from the right. We take the limit as little r approaches big R from the right. In this case, we would use this piece here, right? Because R is bigger than big R. So a lot of R's here. So this would be GM over little r squared. And you can just plug in big R. So you get GM over R squared. So R squared. So they're the same, so therefore the limit exists, right? Because from the left, we got this result. From the right, we got this result. Therefore, the limit as little r approaches big R of f of r is equal to gm over r squared. So the limit certainly exists. And the third condition is that the limit is equal to f of big R. Well, it is, right? Because the limit is equal to this, and that's f of big R. So it certainly is continuous at big R. So the limit as little r approaches big R of f of little r is equal to f of big R. And so we've shown that it's continuous at r. Therefore, it's going to be continuous everywhere because, again, the continuity for the individual pieces is, is pretty clear. Kind of a cool problem. It's not really hard. It's just you have a lot of variables that you're not used to working with. So I think it's it's worth going through it and getting used to all the R's everywhere. I hope this has been helpful to someone. Good luck.